All right, guys, I have been waiting a very long time to make this video. I've been sitting on these shoes for a hot minute now, but we're going to time travel. We're going way back. How far back? I'm going to 1998, and we're taking a look at one of the best, in my opinion at least, takedown models of all time. And yes, I mean of all time. Who remembers these bad boys? Whew, boy, the son of glove, baby. Let's go. Hey, what's going on everyone? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today, we are taking a detailed look and breakdown on one of what I consider to be one of the best takedown models of all time. And there have been a sh ton of awesome takedown models. Way back in the 80s and in the 90s, there were takedowns of your favorite signature shoes. I mean, sh there were takedowns of takedowns, which is wild to even think about, but yeah, that's what Nike was doing at the time. They kind of still follow that model, I guess. You know, the mainline signature, there's usually a takedown, and then they have this other takedown, which would be featured over at like a famous footwear or a big box store like that. So they're not too far off from where they used to be. It's just that they don't really make shoes like this anymore, and they, they kind of should, because these are fire. But before we get started, I did want to give a big thank you and shout out to everybody that is watching and subscribing and liking and leaving comments our algorithm gang if you will i can't say algorithm half the damn time i hate that word you could just be like the people in the comments they call it the algae rhythm i know i like the way that they do it or they call it like the ag gang and shit like that but either way uh, i did want to give a big thank you and shout out to all of you guys you guys have been helping us out on the channel our subscription numbers have gone up a lot of things that you guys don't see on the back end are the numbers outside of like you know the the view numbers and stuff like that and that's not the only thing that youtube's looking for they're looking for comments they're looking for likes aka engagement and then on top of that, when we look at like our viewers, like who our viewers are and where they're from, we always have like at least 50%, maybe a little bit more of our viewers are not subscribers, but they're consistent viewers. That's from the algorithm seeing that you like a certain topic within YouTube and then they're force feeding it to you and stuff like that. But if you can actually do us a favor and subscribe, it would be so awesome. It would be so cool. And one more quick thing, uh, in case you can't see this shirt, which I know you can, Shoe Palace is actually doing something really cool right now. I know that some of you guys might not know who SP Gina or Shoe Palace Gina is, but this is her right here. She was actually a social media uh, influencer, I guess. You, I don't like that word, but you know, that's kind of what they were labeling her as. And she was just a really cool OG head. She's a former educator. She's from the Bay Area, which is where we're from. So I really f with this. On top of that, she was a big ass Jordan fan. So she's the only person person that is a non-athlete to get her own version of an Air Jordan and they released at Shoe Palace. It was crazy. But sadly she passed away and she left a whole bunch of her shoes behind. Obviously you can't take some of this stuff with us. And so with that Shoe Palace has actually teamed up with Charity Buzz and they are auctioning off a lot of her shoes and the proceeds for the auction are actually going towards San Jose State University's scholarship fund which again being from the Bay Area uh, I just think that that's really cool. But the auctions have have started already. They started on April 2nd and they're going through April 16th. So if you were interested in supporting for whatever reason, maybe the shoes are in your size or a loved one's size and you wanted to grab them something that was an old release, or you just wanted to support because you're from the Bay Area or just supporting in general because you know, that's awesome. Then make sure that you head over to the link. We'll link it down below in the description box. We'll also have like a pinned comment with the link and all that stuff. It's charitybuzz.com slash spgina. Again, if you wanted to participate, links are going to be down below. And with that being said, let's take a look back at one of my favorites, man. This is just a shoe that I always wanted. I've never had it. A friend of mine actually had it. His name was William, and he had this specific pair, believe it or not. So this is kind of a really cool thing. These shoes, they do resell uh, for quite a lot of money because, you know, they're rare nowadays. A lot of people that had these got them on discount. I actually found this old ad online where it says like they were like $59, even though the original retail price started at 75, which I know is not like too much. I mean, what a great price that is, right? You know what I mean? And this shoe right here, like came out in all kinds of colors ways it was so cool so i ended up taking a trip down ebay lane which is everybody's favorite auction site to look for things uh, i found a pair for a good price and coincidentally uh, the person that i got them from actually supports this channel so that was kind of cool on top of that he actually restores original shoes just like this and then he sells them on ebay like he'll go and find them in random places and then restore them plop them on ebay so if you were interested og underscore jumpman 
23 is his Instagram handle and you'll see his link in his bio that goes to his eBay account and stuff like that. So if you wanted to give him a follow just to support, then go for it. If you see anything that he has that you wanted, you're welcome. Now, as far as this shoe is concerned, uh, this is called the Son of Glove. It was a takedown of the original glove, which I happen to have an original pair right here. This is one of my favorite shoes like ever from Nike. These came out only in two original colorways, this being one of them, and then this being the other. So these were the only two that we ever saw at retail of this model here. But when this shoe eventually retroed, uh, this is the retro right here. This is the original. These They definitely did not make them like the original. So that's like a sad thing, but it was cool just to be able to grab them nonetheless. But this guy right here, once it was retroed in retro form, they came out in a slew of colorways. Like I'm talking like a ton of them. Some of them were cool. Some of them were hot garbage. Some of them never came out. This is a sale sample. Uh, I got these from a friend and uh, these are crazy. Now, because I got these on eBay uh, and used, they didn't come with an original box. I don't actually remember the original box. I would assume that it was this one. This was kind of like a standard way back then, but I'm going to use it today just because. And like I was saying way back in the beginning of this video, way back in the 80s and in the 90s, there were takedowns of your favorite signature shoes. The Air Flight Turbulence was one of them. This shoe was amazing, still is. But this shoe right here was a takedown of this shoe. You can see where they get all of their similarities from and stuff like that. Even their traction was borrowed and they're fantastic. Now, like I was saying before, this shoe right here is a takedown model of the Nike Zoom Flight glove. They also were called the Nike Zoom Flight 98s. I'm talking about these guys right here, the originals. This one right here, again, takedown. So they called these the son of glove and no, I'm not talking about Gary Payton the second. But either way, this shoe right here was amazing. I'm telling you, they came out in a sh ton of colorways. Not only that, they actually switched up some of the branding on certain colorways where the Nike that is on the little Velcro tab would actually be on the stretch leather upper. It was such a cool shoe. So these were much more of a simplistic take on the original model, the Nike Zoom Glove, first of which would be the outsole. We've got herringbone here, which is awesome. So nothing really wrong there. The original models though look like this. I don't know what they called that traction pattern. It's kind of weird, but it's obviously awesome for visuals and stuff. But when you compare it to something like the Son of Glove, this kind of makes a little bit more sense. However, he was an NBA athlete, so he was playing on a really awesome court. On top of that, the Nike Zoom Glove had a carbon fiber shank plate. The Retros ended up using a plastic shank plate with a carbon fiber graphic on there. No, don't like that. The tech inside the two models was different. The original model featured articulated Zoom Air in the forefoot and then a Zoom Air pod in the heel. This guy right here took out the forefoot cushioning and used an air sole unit in the heel. It was pretty standard for takedowns. That's what the turbulence back there actually offers. Nothing in the front and air in the back, but the phylon that they used at the time was very nice. So you would never have noticed. Now the upper on these guys is similar to the original. I don't want to say that it's exactly the same just because it feels different in hand. So the original shoe right here here, the Zoom Glove has a synthetic build and it's actually a stretch fabric. So they called this stretch leather. They were actually able to make the Son of Glove look like actual leather versus the original model. And so that's where we get this fake kind of like tumble or texture look to it. So that's why whenever I like see leather like this today and everybody's like, yo, it looks amazing. It's like, no, this, this is not even leather. This stretchy as hell. This is damn near spandex. Don't be fooled by textures. You got to look at cut lines. You got to see what the materials in between the layers. Speaking of which, the toe area right here was is also a synthetic. You can actually see that with the cut line. It's just a straight up like fabric piece. And then they had this, uh, I don't know what to call it, but it's like this almost scratchy type of material. Whatever was on this tab was on the toe. They did the same exact thing on the flagship model as well, where the, the tab and the toe had the same exact materials typically. And then both of which had the zip up enclosure. Those were the things that were not like very durable and stuff. So the zippers would pop open on people. So the good thing they had this little tab there, because a lot of times that'd be the only thing keeping that shell closed. Then in Inside of that shell right there is where they really tend to differ as well. This is, by the way, how a lot of people wore these shoes back in the day. It was hella fresh. But when you drop the top and look under the hood, they are both mesh builds. The Flight Glove is more of an open-celled mesh, whereas the Son of Glove is more of a tighter mesh because they're missing something. And that's the monkey paw system. See the TPU little finger things that are coming through there? That's what they would call the monkey paw. The lacing enclosure is the same overall design, but they're different materials as well. The Nike Glove has kind of like a synthetic leather. They also said articulation 1.5 because they had all these little cutouts inside there and those were flex zones. Those are things that they still use today in footwear. You see them on a lot of the older Kobe's and you'll see them here as well. So they're in the main flex zones in the forefoot and in the ankle so that you can move and not feel like you're wearing something that looks like a condom on your foot. 
Now these guys are not usually wearable when you find them out in the wild, but if you did happen to find a pair that was wearable, or you ended up hitting up the same person that I did to grab a pair, because he's got a bunch of them. So if you were interested, they do fit true to size. So whatever you typically wear, that's exactly what I would order. Uh, that is given that you can actually find a pair. Now with all of that being said, uh, do we have a question of the day and please make it good. Would you rather see Prime Jordan play in today's game or Prime LeBron play in Jordan's era and who would do better? I don't know about the do better thing because I'm not trying to piss anybody off, but I would love to take Prime Jordan and plop him in today's game because that's where everybody makes the comparisons. Because everybody says you, you play against plumbers and all kinds of what does that mean? People tried to say that the, the competition that he had in his era was whack. Okay. That's what they say. I would love for them to take that like 98 Bulls team and just plop them in today's game. Could he beat the Warriors? The Warriors are like, yeah, or at least Draymond says, yeah, we'll beat the Bulls. But sound off below and let us know what you think about today's question of the day and which one you'd rather choose. And uh, I guess, what was the last part of it? Like how they do, is that what it was? Yeah. Also on top of that, do you guys remember these? The Nike Son of Glove. This is, I think, just one of the best takedown models ever. It's so cool. I mean, who doesn't love zippers? But yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with us. We really do appreciate it. Again, if you wanted to support Shoe Palace and Gina, make sure that you click the link down below in the description box. Uh, there will also be the pinned comment with the auction link and stuff like that. The auction ends on April 16th. So again, thank you guys for everything. We greatly appreciate it. We will catch you guys on the next one. So until then, have a good one. Hey, what's going on everyone? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the, you can't see my nipples, right? It's really cold. <laughs> it's so cold. It's Cue still, the intro. It's still hoodie season. No, that's not the intro. You can put that at the end. Okay, I'm giving permission, but at the end. All right. And no, you can't. You're just doing extra punctuation. <sighs> it's right there. It's right there.